This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Motorola. Until Apple came along, no one mattered more in mobile than the company that built the first cell phone. And there was no phone more recognizable than the Razer. That brand name redefined the first flip phones in 2004. It helped Android conquer the smartphone world in 2011, and it resurrected the flip phone in 2019 with the world's first mass market foldable. But no amount of retro futurism would hold off Samsung once the South Korean juggernaut decided it wanted a piece of the action. After a slow start with the Galaxy Z Flip, it went for the kill with the good Z Flip 3 and great Z Flip 4, each of which beat the Razer on the spec sheet and on the price list. Well, Motorola kept the world waiting two years for a response, and its attitude now seems to be, if you can't resonate, emulate. This is the Razer 2022, a wide and weird effort to duplicate Samsung's success by copying the copycat. To give Motorola credit, the newest Razer does address the prior model's biggest compromises. It ditches the mid-range chipset for a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, it increases battery size by 25%, and it adds an ultra-wide shooter alongside a new 50-megapixel primary camera. It also takes copious notes from the galaxies with which it was built to grapple. The new selfie shooter sits within a centerline hole punch instead of a notch. The new hinge is a positionable design for the hands-free selfies that come in handy when, say, exploring your new New York City neighborhood, or waiting for IKEA to finally get around to deliver your furniture to same, or taking an away mission to Planet Halloween. That hinge also lets you prop the phone halfway open for easy notification triage using Motorola's classic Moto display. And on that subject, the display uses a new folding technique that not only eliminates the deep gutter of Samsung screens, but also improves on the older Razer's design. I've been using this for almost two months, and the crease is aging beautifully. When you're done with whatever you're doing, the Razer claps shut with authority, and while it feels a little hollow to my hand, the phone still seems more rugged than its predecessor. There are far fewer scratches on the Gorilla Glass 5 backplate than I'd expect after two months of prop-up selfies on concrete and constant in-and-out abuse from the zippers on my usual Razer pockets. Now, if all this is sounding pretty good to you so far, you might be wondering what my problem is. And the good news is that many of my objections are subjective. As someone who admires products that stand out instead of blending in, I valued the distinctiveness of the 2019 and 2020 Razors. You know, instead of trying to build a minimalist pocket square like everyone else, Motorola leaned into the Razors' roots by making an ultra-thin phone with a distinctive chin. Well, <laughs> smash cut to 2022, and what exactly is Razor-like about this chonky coaster? It's just as thick as the Samsung product, it's heavier, and it's comically wide. So much so that it's hard to reach across the display when using it one-handed. And when it's closed, a lethal combination of bevels and bezels make it look even bigger. In fact, someone who saw me using the Razer 22 asked me about my quote, wallet phone, unquote. And yeah, it's an apt comparison. The sum total of these decisions is a design that seems like a knockoff. Not of the modern Samsung competition, but of the first generation Galaxy Z Flip. The off-center camera module, the big bezel framing the inner display, the hinge that doesn't hold its position much past 130 degrees, and the one thing I wish Motorola had cribbed from Samsung, wireless charging, is entirely absent. Now, Motorola's biggest advantage in the flip phone space has always been out here, on its huge outer display. You've always been able to do whatever you want on the Razer's cover display, provided the app you're using can scale to this screen size. And this year, Motorola has expanded its widget selection to make it even more useful. But with those added features comes more complexity. 
getting to your notifications used to be an easy tap and hold. Now it's a confusing mix of taps and swipes, made more awkward by the new side-mounted fingerprint sensor on its chintzy-feeling button. Also, it's harder to type on for some reason, and you know, on top of all that, it just looks worse. Where the prior Razer blended its cover display into the casing with elegant curves, the new model just sticks its screen onto a fat, flat face and surrounds it with a massive picture frame. I'm not a guy who picks on bezels often, but it's hard not to notice how goofy this looks. It's also much easier to accidentally unlock the phone thanks to that too soft power button, which means you sometimes get terrifying self-portraits like this when you pull it out of your pocket. The good news? When you use that camera as intended, you can do an awful lot better. Join me for a photo and video adventure from random Raleigh wrestling matches to my Brooklyn to Brooklyn move right after this. You know, my favorite sponsors are companies whose products I would use even if they weren't sponsors. And I've been using Surfshark for nearly as long as Mr. Mobile has existed. Surfshark is an award-winning VPN that I used to use to protect my privacy on open Wi-Fi networks in hotels or coffee shops. And I still do that. But more and more, I find myself using it to just make the internet better. Those pop-ups you get on every website these days? Well, Surfshark blocks them. Your favorite shows are only streaming in a specific region? Well, Surfshark unblocks those. And while I don't keep its ad blocker turned on, because after all, I rely on ads, like this one, to survive, well, some websites just take it way too far, with ads that are actually malware or phishing schemes in disguise. Well, Surfshark drops the block hammer on those, too. So make your internet better. Get Surfshark at the link in the description and use code Mr. Mobile for 83% off and three extra months free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Low shutter speed, a somewhat dated user interface, video that exports in the annoying Rec 2020 color space. Yeah, Motorola has kept to its roots with a compromised camera experience. But in terms of the raw results, well, the video was good enough to fill in a few gaps for me when filming my Galaxy Fold 4 review up in Binghamton this fall. And shooting stills, the new Razer didn't disappoint me nearly as often as prior Motorola's have. I got more dynamic range than I expected when I shot the Queen Mary 2 against the light, or shot myself taking in a gorgeous sunset in that same New York harbor. Backyard Halloween photos came out beautifully, despite the waning cool light of dusk conflicting with the warm incandescence overhead. And to my eye, the phone even beat out the Pixel 7 Pro in this low light shot, better bringing out the details of the Red Hook Tavern cheeseburger, which by the way is to die for. Now, the lack of a telephoto shooter means you don't want to rely on it for zoom shots because the digital crop can only get you so far, and the ultra-wide camera is ultra-underwhelming in anything but the best lighting. Just look at how bad this color matching is. Ugh. But these limitations are common to clamshell flip phones. There just isn't enough space in the case. On the whole, I think Motorola deserves praise for adding versatility to the Razer, while also preserving the cover screen preview that leverages its flippable form factor. You may have noticed that I'm using the third-party Nova Launcher instead of Motorola's stock software, software I haven't spoken too much about, and that's because the device ships with a version of Android 12 customized for the China market, complete with all the associated annoyances, interface tweaks that make Android emulate the iPhone, battery optimizations that make the phone last all day and then some, but at the expense of missing critical notifications. And just weird bugs, like not being able to change my accent color anymore because the personalization app keeps crashing, uh, or the bug that keeps displaying Telegram notifications long after I've actually checked Telegram. Yeah, 
The software is annoying, but the biggest annoyance is the reason for it. Because this phone spent the first two months of its existence available only in China, and just recently was rolled out to Europe with different software that presumably works better. I don't know. I haven't been given the chance to test it. And this, friends, is where I'll cop to maybe taking this brand name a little too seriously. It was Shakespeare who wrote, A razor by any other name would flip as hard, or words to that effect. And I just think this thing should have been named anything else. After all, annoyances aside, it's an objectively solid phone. It's got great performance, good call quality, and as you heard earlier, the speakers are loud and clear. It even has Motorola Ready 4, so you can turn it into a laptop replacement with an accessory, a feature Samsung stubbornly omits from its Galaxy Flips. While it's not IP rated, a water repellent nano coating gives its internal components splash resistance. And with a debut price of about 1200 euro, it's the most affordable Motorola foldable yet. If it were called the Moto Max or Mega Moto or something, it would make a lot more sense. But this is a fat phone using a thin name, an American icon that's not available in America. Motorola sold the soul of the Razer in order to seek success by fitting in. And in doing so, it sacrificed the distinctiveness that made it something special, instead of just another alternative to Samsung. This video was produced following two months with a China market Razer 2022 purchased by my publisher, Future PLC. Thanks to dbrand for making that possible. I asked Motorola for some comments and clarifications, but I never give manufacturers copy approval rights or any editorial input into the reviews I write. They're seeing it for the first time right alongside you. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends.